And in some sense, uh, I suspect we are headed to um, having to accept COVID as a permanent fact of the landscape when that was not a foregone conclusion, that in effect, our politicizing of this issue is going to leave us with a bug that we can't ever get rid what, of. Why do you think that? Like, I mean, I've been hoping that and watching Israel in particular, there seems to be some indication that they've got the vaccinations ramped up to the point where they're having some effect on the rate of transmission of the virus, which is a positive thing. And, you know, I keep hoping that the vaccines are, there's enough of them and they're getting out there fast enough so that we might be able to keep the bug under control. You, you're you not so optimistic about that, apparently. No, I'm not, because for one thing, I know that it's, you know, it's been obvious from the beginning it was going to evolve and that the key to managing its evolving out of our control was limiting the number of people who had it and limiting their ability to spread new variants around the globe. And we've done a terrible job of this. Somehow, you know, a year in, it is only beginning to be uh, it is only beginning to dawn on us that new mutants that are harder for our immune systems to recognize are essentially a certainty and that the key to ever regaining control is to ensure that when these things arise somewhere, they don't immediately find their way around the globe. So um, I guess what I would say is I think we tend to, you know, even the the idea of compromise in a political sense is the wrong approach with something like COVID. We should have been much more aggressive earlier on so that our total level of compromise with respect to civil liberties could have been much less. In other words, if early on we had engaged in a really intense six-week lockdown and we had... Um, ramped up our capacity to test for COVID with precision so that after six weeks, basically the idea of six weeks would be, it's very hard to control COVID inside of a household. It tends to bounce around, um, but that it will tend to burn itself out in most households within something like a six week, week period. Um, that if we had engaged in that and then used track and trace to find and control outbreaks following such an intense lockdown, we might not have had to deal with a full year of the half-assed measure. And the sense is, the sense that I have is that we're getting, you know, uh, maybe it's a Pareto distribution. Maybe it's we're suffering 80% of the harm of lockdowns and getting 20% of the value that we might get for having, you know, not gone the full distance. And um, unfortunately, I think the prerequisite to our behaving rationally is having a um, having our experts completely liberated from market forces, from political dynamics, and uh, free to tell us what it is that we need to know. And uh, then getting on the same page and having a proper rubric for evaluating what has worked and what hasn't. And instead, what we've had is an, a thoroughly politicized discussion from the get-go in which even our countermeasures are uh, fought over on the basis of, you know, if you, you know, why is it that a, you know, a Trump voter is much more likely to be a mask skeptic? A question of masks is an empirical question. It shouldn't have anything to do with your political leanings. And yet, it undeniably does uh, in in North America, and that has has robbed us of the kinds of controls that we might otherwise have instituted.